Good morning, friends. Welcome to episode number 92. So we are here in the Battle Chateau, and we are doing rotating battles right now. And they're pretty interesting, so I've never really... I mean, I've done a few of them before, just as part of the nature of the game, but never really gotten into them too much. Uh, I'm going to do three on screen, just two reasons. One, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what they are like and how they work before we face the Battle Chatelaine. Assuming we get to the Battle Chatelaine, there's, there's a lot of... Um, I won't say luck. I guess it, it is luck. It's more randomness. Um, or guessing, I guess, is the right word for it in these battles. Um, and also because this episode's going to be a bunch of like odds and ends and little things, fun things, but lots of little things. So I um, want to make sure we have enough to kind of fill a, a whole episode here. So uh, the way rotate battles work, in case you guys don't remember from our battle in Mauville Hill, is each Pokemon trainer has uh, three Pokemon out at a time. And it's basically, normally if you switch, you use up your turn by switching. But in rotate battles, when you kind of switch, or rotate rather, there's switching is a different thing. I could switch Pokemon as well, which would take a turn. Um, for example, I have Slate in the back. I could switch him in. But um, rotating does not take up your turn, so you can rotate and attack. So you kind of have, it's almost like a guessing game where you have to kind of say, okay, what move could I use that would be fairly good against all three of these Pokemon? So for example, I could use, I could Mega Evolve and use Return, a fairy type attack which will be super effective against Primeape, even against Sauce Buck, and not very effective against Magkar Ghost. So depending on which one he switches to, it could do, you know, a lot of damage, okay damage, or not very much damage at all. Um, so my kind of question to myself then is, is there a move um, somewhere else on the team that would be kind of better off? For example, um, so I couldn't use a ground type move because it wouldn't be good against Sauce Buck. I mean, I could, but it wouldn't be the best move. So I'm just kind of running through all like 12 of my moves here. 11 of my attacking moves. Um, do, 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 do. So, I kind of wish I had Metagross out right now, but I don't want to use a turn switching. I think if I go to... I can't use Grass because it's not going to get Cargo. I can't use... Actually, it's even. Or it's not going to get Saul's Buck. Um, we might even have like Sap Zipper, the ability which makes it immune to Grass uh, attacks. I, I could use a Poison move, but it's not going to get Cargo. So I'm thinking I might use High Jump Kick. Let's go for that. Let's do high jump kick. I promise I won't take this long for every turn. Um, it's a stab fighting move. It would be good against Mag Cargo. Sweet, and he did bring on Mag Cargo. Um, and even against the other two. So it's a, probably my safest bet there. Although it can miss, so that, that can make it interesting. I actually thought I might lose the last one just because of bad guesses, essentially, is what it comes down to. All right, so now that we have Mag Cargo defeated, um, it's pretty safe to use Flare Blitz because all these guys are weak to... Either weak to fire or normal. I take normal damage from fire, so let's use Flare Blitz. Heliolisk is very fast. Uh, luckily, it does not get stabbed from Focus Blast. Otherwise, oh, I don't think it would have knocked me out, but it would have been very, very, very close. Alright. And actually, the recoil definitely would have knocked me out, so... Good thing Heliolisk is not a fighting type. Wow, look at that recoil. Alright, now I don't know if I'm faster than any of these guys, but let's give it a try. If not, it doesn't matter too much anyway. Ooh, Primeape was faster, but we missed the Stone Edge. So a bit of luck in our favor there. But I did miss a, um, what did I miss? A Stone Edge last battle, so... It evens out, right? And Ford is knocked out, but that's okay, because it is now 3-1. to one. And let's bring out, uh... Well, we have to bring out Slate, obviously, but I'm going to use Rosary to attack, because... It, it does get a little easier, I've noticed, as you knock out their Pokémon, because then they have less to choose from, so... Um... Definitely makes the prediction a lot less challenging. Hey, that was a good move. Avoided a Leech Seed, although I'm not sure. I'm not sure Salzbuck had really a chance of winning there. Salzbuck is one of those Pokemon that um, it doesn't have super high stats, kind of averaging stats at best, but the stats are allocated pretty well, plus it has a good ability and some good moves, so definitely a Pokemon I would consider training, but um, even though it doesn't have like super high base stats. That's cool how it changes with the seasons. I, I do like that. All right, battle number 19, here we go. And I really hope we win, because otherwise I'll have to redo this all over again. Yeah, I've, I thought about going through and doing like all of them, you know, the 50 challenge, but I feel like one, you know, knowing me, I'm going to get to like challenge 43, have bad luck, and then just be really disappointed and mad that I lost and not want to do it again. So I think going for the single battles will be a good challenge. It'll unlock the battle we talked about earlier. Um, but... Um, and I think it's the one that my team is best made for, although this is kind of like a single battle in many ways. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the rest of them I'll just do like I've been doing to the Battle Chatelaine. 
and show you the last couple on screen. Okay, so here we have poison type, so I can't, or I probably shouldn't use a fairy type attack, although two, two out of three is not bad, as, as Meatloaf said, but let's see if there's something better. How about a fire attack? Although Grumpy can have thick fat, which is kind of the equivalent of making it um, not very effective to uh, fire attacks. Um, it's be a good time to have uh, Metagross out again with the Meteor Mash. Um, I, mean, I could use a Shadow Ball, which, but that might not affect Perugly then. It's a normal type. So, mm, decisions, decisions. This might be just one where I have to risk it and hope he doesn't switch to Golbat. Um, I, mean, I could switch and use like Stone Edge, but it doesn't get stabbed. It can miss. Let's take a bit of a chance here. Sometimes you gotta do that in life, right? And hope he doesn't switch to Golbat. And of course he did. All right. I also, I'm not sure if the AI is playing like. Like you think a player, so there's not really anything that's really a default about keeping the current Pokemon out. Okay, fly, interesting. Very interesting. Um, the trouble is if I switch to, or if I rotate to Blaziken or Lily, they take super effective damage, so I can't do that. I could switch in Slate to take the hit, but then I don't get to attack this turn. So I think it's probably better overall to take the fly, which shouldn't do too much damage. Um, and just get a flamethrower off. I can also just get a roost off and keep on my current Pokemon. Maybe that's honestly the best thing to do. Let's do that. We've seen the gold bats faster. Plus it was a speed tie. Thankfully it's not. That would have been very awkward. Didn't do much and we'll heal it right back off. I did less than I thought. I kind of wish I had done flamethrower now. But that's okay. We are right back where we started. Except now we have a chance to use another return. And yep, there we go. Oh no, fake out. Interesting, I guess Fake Out... Ooh, a critical hit. I guess Fake Out is the first turn that Pokemon is on the field. Not that any Pokemon is. I kind of think it should work the other way around, to be honest with you guys, but it doesn't, so... Alright, Pergly is faster. It's a very fast Pokemon. It doesn't look it, but it is. So I might want to actually just use um, Roost after this. It seems like their Pokemon don't do a ton of damage, depending on who they are. And Quillfish, a poison type. Ooh, okay. So, another poison type, rather, I should say. Um, let's use Roost and see what he wants to do. I really would love to get rid of that Crumb Pig so I can maybe use um, our Poison Doe now. Alright, at least we'll heal up some health. Um, yeah, the trouble is I can't use Earthquake because of Golbat. I can't use Flamethrower because possibly Crumb Pig. I'm assuming it has Thick Fat, but it could have own Tempo, I guess. Um, just don't know, guys. There's not any choice I use. I can, I mean, I can switch to another Pokemon or rotate to another Pokemon, but um, now it's even worse because Quillfish resists. It's one of the few Pokemon that resists both both of Ford's stab moves. I mean, a Rock type move might be our best bet. It would at least deal some damage to all of them and super effective to um, super effective damage to um. Uh, Golbat. The thing is, it could miss. Okay, so didn't miss at least, but see, this is how I could lose those by, like, you know, being talked into using. Um, oh, this is going to do a lot of damage, and it's a one hit knockout. Okay, that is not good at all. Now it is three to three, and we are poisoned, so oh, I really hope we don't lose in the second to last battle here. I might just have to start taking guesses and hope I get lucky. All right, now we do have Slate, who's kind of our secret weapon here, because, see, I actually think these four Pokemon together have a really good type coverage. Um, so that kind of worked out really well, because, like, Meteor Mash... I don't, don't want to use that Headbutt in case he keeps Grump again, but Meteor Mash is, I guess, not good against Quillfish is the, is the issue there, right? So maybe it's actually not that perfect. Luckily, Quillfish isn't too powerful and can't do too much in return to Metagross. I guess that's really Metagross' saving grace is all the resistances, so... Let's go for Meteor Mash, because I'm most worried about this Grump Pig. So I don't want to use that Headbutt into the Grump Pig and give it a free chance to attack with, like, I don't even know what it would use, but Earth Power or something. I don't even know if it can learn Earth Power, but it could probably learn something. All right, so now it's going to become a lot easier. They're both weak to Psychic Attacks, like Zen Headbutt. Protect, just wasting a turn. Thankfully, Ava's not taking poison damage right now, which, again, you kind of think it would be, but... All right, flying in the air... Could have brought in um, Ava to use a roost, which probably would have been fine. Would have been a net gain, but 
rather just use that headbutt. And it, not a knockout, kind of surprisingly. Looks like Slate is, bo is uh, slower than both these guys. Maybe I can use a Rock Polish here. Although if I knock out this Quillfish, it probably won't matter. Oh, I didn't. Must have a Focus Band. Yep. Alright, well... Not really reason not to use Rock Polish, as far as I can see. I wonder if I rotate a Pokemon in, does that count as the Toxic Spikes? I feel like it shouldn't, because it's not really switching, but I just don't know. Alright. So now, assuming no shenanigans with this 1% mischance we do have, we should have this battle on lockdown. So you can see it, it was hit and miss for a second there. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but... Uh, once you get things going, it becomes a lot easier. And Golbet's just wasting our time. Thank you, Golbet. See, I'm having a lot of fun with these. I definitely could convince myself that, like, oh, having this 50 in a row challenge could be fun. Um, but I don't think it would be fun if I lost it, like, you know, right before getting to the Battle Chateau Lane. And, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I, I did not take French in high school. I took World Language Connection, which was a little bit of each language, so I maybe learned a little bit of French, but nothing I remember. That was in middle school. And I took three years of high school Spanish, most of which I also don't remember, unfortunately. All right, here we go. But um, the way I look at it, too, is that, yes, I'd have fun doing it, but I'd have more fun doing like a Platinum Let's Play, so I'd rather use my time elsewhere. Here she comes, Battle Chatelaine Morgan. Seems like she's one of the younger ones as well, due to her glove length. If you're free for a time, come on by. If you're bored for a while, stop on in. Battle till you bust, oh won't you try? Wanna battle, the Battle Mason replica's fine. Heh <laughs> heh, what do you think, my lad? We just had that jingle written for our wee Battle Mason replica. Music can be a lovely distraction. Do you not find that yourself? Oh me, I've not even introduced myself, have I? Well, don't bite my head off. Oh, she's the eldest. It doesn't seem like her gloves are actually that long, so maybe that's not true. I, I read it on the wiki, so if it's on the internet, it must be true, right? I'm the eldest of the four Battle Chatelaine sisters. Do call me Morgan. We all thank you for coming to visit our cherished Battle Mason replica today. I'll do me best to entertain here at the birthplace of the Battle Mason. Is it really the birthplace, though? Interesting hairstyle there. I'd, I'd love to see her, like, hair preparation in the morning. So, not a random team, from what I've read. Again, I could be wrong. But um, interesting that she has, like, a sauce box. Nothing, nothing too interesting. Um, okay, so... And I assume they probably have fun picking these teams to kind of balance them in terms of resistances. They probably have like a nice little chart or a tool they use, maybe one of the same online tools that I use to get the balance here. Okay, so again, we can't use a fairy type move because of Klefki. Can't use a ground move because of Mantine. I say can't, but maybe maybe shouldn't is a better word. Fire move because of Mantine. Um, rock would not be good against Steel. Fire is not good against Mantine. How about Grass? Not good against Steel. See, these three are pretty well balanced. I guess it's not too hard to find three Pokemon that resist together almost every move in the game. If not every move, with one of them being Steel-type. So, um... Yeah, if I use Flamethrower, I have a bad chance against Mantine. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll go with Ford and go with a... Let's go with Ford and a Flare Blitz. Because at least it'll do some damage to Mantine, even though it won't do a ton. I feel like having a ghost type Pokemon for this would be really useful. Hey, good, you didn't switch. Nice. Yes, yeah, so even if they have one Pokemon that resists, you still have a 2 out of 3 chance, so it's, you know... It is guessing, but it's guessing with odds in your favor. Because, um, I mean, I guess Saucebuck is normal in Grass, right? So I guess even there, your ghost wouldn't have a, a guaranteed chance either. Alright, so... Um... So now Rock-type would actually be a good move to use. I just don't want to risk missing. Let's at least get some damage out. Okay, so he did use Mantine, so this could be bad. Although Aqua Ring, I'm not really too worried about Aqua Ring. I'd be more worried about an Air Slash or a Waterfall or a Surf or anything of that nature. Especially with this recoil we're about to take. Yeah, you can see that even being not very effective, it takes out about half its HP. And the Aqua Ring does restore it. So, okay, so another Flare Blitz would not be a knockout. And you know what I can do now, though? Oh, no, Poison-type! I was like, oh, I could use a Fairy-type move without without fear. But I cannot. Um, mm -mm -mm. Decisions, decisions. Do I want to risk... <sighs> Let's risk a Stone Edge, but if I missed this, this will give her the window she needs. Luckily, we didn't miss. Okay, keeping up the offense. Very good. 
didn't do much damage, and it did use stockpile to increase its defenses, so... <sighs> Again, things just get dicey now, because like, I really want to use Earthquake against it, but the other two would be resistant to Earthquake, so just not good. And restoring some HP with Black Sludge. Um... <laughs> yeah, Psychic Move would be good, but I don't want to give... I don't want to switch. I'll just save uh, Slate for later on. Let's go with another... Flare Bless and see what happens. If he brings a Mantine, at least he'll do a ton of damage to it. Alright, so Swallow. So see, I should use Earthquake, but again, with, you know, a 1 in 3 chance of it being that good that I didn't. Okay, Toxic, I can deal with Toxic. As usual, I'm more afraid of offensive powerhouse moves than I am, like, status moves or even stat weakening moves. Seems like her team is a little bit more stall based. Hey, there we go. Got some luck. Oh, no. I was, was going to say we got some luck, but apparently not. Saul's buck is faster. Crit didn't matter, but I'll, on the bright side, I'll at least do a little bit of recoil damage to itself here. Okay, so. We still haven't cleared off another Pokemon, which is what we really need to get going. The good news is we are bringing in Slate. And I don't know. I imagine Slate's going to be... Hmm, it's going to be slower than some of these Pokemon. Let's just go ahead and use... Do I want to use Zen Headbutt for the... The trouble is if I use, like, um, Rock Polish and, and he switches to Swalla, it's kind of a waste of a turn. Let's do it, though, because I don't think Swalla can really do too much to Metagross. I could be wrong here. The Manting can use Air Slash, though, which could flinch me. Please don't flinch me. Please don't flinch me. Please don't flinch me. Okay, good. I was really nervous there. Now that we've Rock Polish, we can't be flinched anymore, so that's good. And I'm pretty sure we keep our speed boost as we go. It did give him, I guess, a little bit of healing, so that's something. All right, and Zen Headbutt, uh, none of them will resist that now that Klefki is defeated. So, bearing this mischance, we have a pretty safe bet here. And now that Mantine is defeated, both of these will take normal damage from Meteor Mash. Let's use Zen Headbutt, though, just because of um, Swalot's defense increase. I'm not sure if a Meteor Mash would have knocked it out at that health range. Double Edge, once again, not too afraid. Now, I think it can learn... High jump kick, or I think it's just regular jump kick, Swallows Buck can learn, which is pretty cool. Still a good coverage move. It can learn Mega Horn, which will be even against me. I don't think it can learn any ground attacks, which would be super effective, so I'm not too worried. I think at this point we pretty much have this in the bag. So it goes to show you, it doesn't seem close based on like the Pokemon count, but it, you know, it really things could have gone the other way very easily there. She made some good guesses, and I got some bad mischance. Just the way it is. So, rotate battles can be very close, but not in the traditional way that regular battles are. See, even with super effective, thanks to its defense boost from acid armor, didn't quite knock it out. Alright, I'm going to use Earthquake now, though, just because it's guaranteed accuracy, and might as well. It's going to be a, a guaranteed knockout being super effective either way. Alright, guys, and that is it. Our second battle of Chatelaine. Should get a lot of battle points from that. Uh, I had no idea you were such a fine trainer. I should expect no less from Hoenn's champion, I suppose. I'm taking quite a shine to you, my fine lad. Say t sad to say, we've quite run out of time for a battle today. I wait with all my heart for the next time you come to challenge me. They talk a lot, don't they? Alright. And we get 20 battle points. Very nice. We should have a lot of these at this point, so... Probably could afford... Um, Probably could afford some of those good items like a life orb or a choice scarf or something. We'll see. Yep, like I said, could do the super rotation battle challenge, but not going to. Going to resist the urge. Plenty of more fun things to do, and I, ha I have a lot of Pokemon games to catch up on. They're making them at this point almost faster than I can play them. Maybe faster. I haven't. Because I'm, I'm making a Let's Play once every like year and a half or so on average, so. What battle points do we have? 96? Wow, more than I thought we did, so that's that's really nice. Um, I definitely am going to consider getting a Life Orb. I could also get maybe a maybe a Choice Specs would be good for like Rosary, although Life Orb would also be good, because then you could switch moves. She would just take a little bit of damage in return, so it's definitely a trade-off there. Decisions, decisions. Imagine a Choice Spec Petal Dance, that'd be very powerful. And you're locked in anyway, so it does have some synergy there. Um, but for today, let's just head to the beach. Oh, it'd be so nice to go to the beach right now. I haven't been on like a, a beach vacation in a while. I've been to California twice in the last couple years, but it was during um, winter when the prices are cheaper. 
which is nice. Both times I had a hotel with a, a heated pool, so I liked that a lot, but not quite the same thing as the beach. Like, I walked from the beach to my feet in the water, but, um, it's actually really chilly when I went to the beach the last time. I had to, like, wear a sweater, and even then I was a little, a little cold. Um, okay, so we are not learning any of these moves. How about from you? Plenty of moves to choose from. Nope, none of those. Third time's the charm. Bounce is a pretty good move. Aqua Tails. These are going to be the really good uh, kind of offensive moves now. Uh, a lot of these are really good moves, actually. But the only one we want is Dragon Pulse. Long last, it is time to teach it to Eve instead of Hyper Beam. It served us well, but like I said, better typing, better accuracy, and across two turns, it'll have better damage. Yes, one turn it falls behind, but unless you're using it to end like the final Pokemon in a battle, I'd rather have Dragon Pulse anyway. And Dragon Pulse with Surf and Ice Beam has really good coverage, so... Took us a long time, but at last, our Eve has her full, complete moveset. No more for today, thank you. I'm pretty sure this last guy has the other move that we're looking for. And that would be Thunder Punch. He has all the elemental punches. So we are going to teach that to... Wow, four of our, or three of our Pokemon could learn it. We're going to teach it to four, though. Like I said, I think a while ago, I was considering teaching it to Slate, but I think I just really like Rock Polish too much. I'd rather have that, especially with like Zen Headbutt and the Flinch Chance. I just I think it works together really well, and um, and Metagross is fairly slow, so yeah, I'm definitely okay with that. Um, and Stone Energy is great, but just between the Mist Chance and Thunder Punch having slightly better coverage, Thunder Punch is going to be slightly better. Plus, we could use an Electric Move on our team. Right now, we don't have any. So, all right, and with that, we now have our final team moose set, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Um, go through it real quick. You guys know Dan. I'm not going to go through all the moves, but you can read them if you'd like. Um, yep. Ava has hers. Slate has his. Yeah, there we go. That's it. I was checking to make sure. And how's our speed doing? 120, 146. Okay, so yeah, so Slate is one of our slower Pokemon. Even slightly slower than Eve here. Terry is in the middle, but I think when she may go well, she does get... I want to say she gets faster. Um, actually, I want to look that up. I'm, I'm pretty sure she does, but I could be wrong. It could just be the other four moves that get boosted. Special defense does not get boosted, so I'm pretty sure speed does. Um, nope, it actually stays the same, base 80, so... A very middling speed, actually. Tempted to teach her Dragon Dance instead of Flamethrower. That was something I strongly considered early on and actually had there in the planning stage, but I just feel like I'd rather have Flamethrower as a coverage move. I like those gel types with um, a weakness to it, with a lower defense, and especially for like coverage against like Golbat and all, if I face, or a Crobat if I face one. Although I don't think I'll be facing one the rest of the game, but you never know. So I think just overall, very tough one, would not fault anybody for having a Dragon Dance. It'd be a, a very good choice, but kind of just like Flamethrower better. I'm also trying not to use stat boosting moves too much in these last plays, just because it tends to result in a clean sweep, which is a little less fun to watch. But um, yeah, I can see pros and cons either way. It's not like I think I'm going with a worse move. Um, 137 for speed there, so honestly, they're all about the same. Board is our fastest, that's kind of surprising. I guess it was really that EV training I did, that probably is a big part of it, but still not insane speed. Obviously it would be slower than a Pokemon like Crobat or Jolteon or anything like that, Aerodactyl even. Alright, well, okay, so that checks off the rotate battle stage of the Battle of Chatelaine. What else should we do here? Uh, move tutors, I need to get the Sharpedo off screen still. Um, all right, I know what we can do. Uh, we don't have fly. I wonder if we can sneak in two more battles into this episode. I'm going to give it a try. The first one should be very fast. So let's start with that one. Actually, you know what, on second thought, because it's so fast, let me do the other one first. That way, if it takes longer than I think, we can just save it for another episode. We are heading back to everyone's favorite central city, or at least mine. Mauville. Uh, I'm not going to go see it, because I think it would take too much time and not be worth it. But apparently I've read that if you go to the top of Mauville, you can actually see Winona, the gym leader, perched on top of um, one of the towers there. Right, so we are here for two reasons. One is I think we can get the bike now. Um... Assuming I talk to all the trainers I think I have. Um, 
hmm, maybe I do need to talk to one of those trainers, because it seems like we cannot get both bikes yet. Hopefully I didn't read that wrong. All right, well, maybe I have access to all the trainers, but haven't actually talked to one of them yet. Yeah, I guess not. Okay. All right, so hold off on that one. We'll come back and do that later. But while I'm here, I do want to do another inverse battle. Um, who should we bring out? Let's bring out... I guess Dan has a pretty good... He has four attacking moves, which is good, so... Let's start with him. One more inverse battle for the road. I think he's increased uh, his Pokemon now that we've beaten the Pokemon League. They still might not be as high as ours because... Um, you know, because we have leveled beyond... I think it's 55 is our... But, um... Oh! Macacnia! So I guess, unfortunately, we'll see as, as we go on, but he might have... It might just be the levels that are increased, not the evolution, which is really dumb. You think they would have just, you know, increased the evolution when they did it. Um, again, wouldn't have mind if they spent a little less time on some, some other feature and a little more time here. But, okay, so Cacnea, I think, is Grass and Dark. Um, it could just be Grass, though. I'm not sure if it, it might just gain its Dark type later on. So either way, let's use Surf, because that's the way to go. Not being fully evolved and a higher level and super effective. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get any really cool prize here, because we'd have to have, like, you know, six plus attacks, which is just really hard to do when you're using super effective attacks from better Pokemon. Um, Alright, so Surf is going to be four times super effective, because it's not good against grass or water, so... I would face this guy twice if we could, but apparently we can't, so maybe we'll have to do that other battle after all. Almost level 58, and Carvana, okay, well... Just for something a little bit different, let's use Flamethrower. And again, Boom Burst would do more damage. I'm just using it because it's super effective and it gets you like the points. We can get, I guess, a Citrus Berry. So not really a great prize, but hey. Oh, and he had a, a Focus Band. Is that what that was? Focus Sash. Okay. So hey, we get four super effective attacks. That's kind of nice then. But um, I'm not sure if it's good enough for a better prize or not. Oh, and Dan has fainted. So not going to hit that level right away after all. Okay, let's bring in Lily and we can use a, uh, a Shadow Ball. Carvana, I'm pretty sure, already has the dark typing. And down goes Carvana. Oh, is it not super effective? Did I, or did I just miss the text? Oh well. Maybe only Sharpedo is... No, I'm... I, I'm... I'm 85% sure <laughs> that Carvana is also dark type. Apparently I can't spell Carvana. Sorry, hang tight, guys. Car the nah. There it is. Yeah, water and dark. Okay, I was right. So I must have just missed the text then. Hey, Rosalie Berry. Okay, so I guess we by getting four, we got a little better than a citrus berry. We can only face you once, right? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Um, alright, well, in that case we do have time for our one more battle. And I'm not gonna heal up just because this battle is gonna be super easy, I think. But I do want to do it just because it's a cool battle that Probably should have done earlier, just didn't didn't know about it, or if I did, I forgot about it. So Alright. Also not sure we fought those guys on screen yet on the uh the ace trainers. Not sure I have, so if I have, then um I'm gonna apologize for doing them again, but I'm um, not right now, but later on. But just in case we haven't, uh, I would like to fight them again. Maybe I'll fight them with like some interesting Pokemon, like not our main team, or you know. Even if I face them with our main team, the chances of using the same Pokemon twice in a row. That's the really cool thing about Pokemon, is that everything is different. Even facing the exact same battles multiple times, by using different Pokemon yourself, it, it becomes a different matchup. It's it's really interesting. Alright, but we are here because of the Secret Base Club. And I'm not going to buy any decorations today. I'll do that off screen once I kind of plan out my Secret Base. I think it's down here, if I remember correctly, right? I think it's, yeah, I think it's over here. It'll probably have a sign out front. Um, but you can actually do a battle in there. I'm not sure when you unlock this either, if it's like the 8th gym, or Catching Kyogre, or the, probably the Pokemon League if I had to guess. But um, you can actually face Mr. Arune. Yo yo yo, Owen, did you need something for me? What are the flags again? I haven't made any, okay, flags yet, whatever. Let's have a battle with him and his flag on. He's just getting stronger, but I don't know, can you even face him before? I don't think he faced you the first time, although it would have been cool if he did. Alright, he has a Flygon-only Pokémon. Like I said, not a tough battle. 
I think they could have given him at least like three Pokemon, but is what it is. Level 53. Um, we have Dazzling Gleam, which is super effective. So that's 80 times 2 is 160. Yeah, Petal Dance will do more damage being neutral. Because it's um, not good against Dragon, but good against Ground. Probably a one-hit knockout? Yes, it is. Okay. Like I said, a very quick, very easy battle. But hey, there it is. And level 60. So the Lee's getting way up there. Still have a ways to go, though, before we get to uh, 68 and can challenge the Pokemon League. Since, of course, we don't get experience for those um, Battle Chateau battles. All right. Well, um, all right, let, um, <laughs> let me do say one more thing this episode. Yeah, let's do one more thing just to tie things up. And then we will call it an episode, and I'll have to do some more battle chateauing off screen and wait for a new day to do legendaries, uh, or at least till after midnight tonight. But that, that's going to give me time to do the battle chateau and maybe some more training on Breloom, get to level 100. It's actually working out pretty well. I was worried for a second there I'd be like a bottleneck where I'd have to do a lot of stuff off screen, but it does not seem to be the case. This is I thought this was Crescent Island for a second, but it is not. All right, we are heading not quite to Mauville. Right outside it. So, like I was saying, I want to do some kind of um, some battles where I can use some Pokemon that we haven't used too much. And you guys might remember a very long time ago, it seems like a different lifetime, but not quite. Really, not even two months ago, at least in my time, and maybe just a little over two months ago in yours, maybe three months ago, if I post these once a day as I'm planning to. Um, we put two Pokemon in the daycare center. And let's see how they're doing. I'm sure they're doing very well. We don't have a slot right now, but okay, 57 and 53. Actually, not as high as I thought. I guess once you get to um, the higher levels, you know, the rate goes down a lot, so um, you have to take a lot of steps to get them to level up. But it goes to show you that if you if you want to play the game kind of um, most efficiently, like if you want to like speed through the game, um, I mean, I guess there's a lot of ways you can speed through the game, but one kind of cool way to do it would be to have a team of four Pokemon, put two more in the daycare, and then come back like, when you're like after the eighth gym or so. I don't want to do that though because the downside there is you don't get to like really feel the Pokemon grow and get to experience them. But it's more fun with a team of six. You can switch things up as you go, keep things dynamic. I feel like it's a lot more interesting that way, both for me and for you guys as well, I'm sure. Um, but you can tell that they do actually keep up pretty well with your actual team. So what I'm going to do is take these guys off off screen and then I'll probably evolve them on screen so you can see them kind of at least grow a little bit. We'll teach them some good moves. Um, we'll even give, um, I think we have the Mega Manectric. I'll have to check on that, but we'll give that to Manectric and then we'll use them in some battles. So that'll be pretty, pretty fun, I think. Maybe not next episode. I'm not really sure how the rest of these are going to work out, but definitely in the near future. So that is it for me. I'm going to get some breakfast, go to work, and uh, be thinking about this all day, I'm sure. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching. As always, have a great day yourselves, and I will see you right back here very soon.